Ten years ago, on September 8, 2011, a widespread power outage occurred, which affected much of the southwestern United States, as well as a portion of Baja California, Mexico. It was the largest power outage ever recorded in California history. Particular hard hit was the Sa San Diego County, as well as Tijuana, Imperial Valley, Yuma, Arizona, and a small portion of Orange County that was serviced by San Diego Gas and Electric. At the time of the 2011 blackout, the San Diego Gas and Electric only had one 500,000 volt power transmission line called the Southwest Power Link, which interconnected it to the rest of the western grid through a substation in Yuma, Arizona. Now, the next year, San Diego Gas and Electric did complete a second 500,000 volt line called the Sunrise Power Link, which was being constructed during the time of the outage, but still it only parallels the westernmost portion of the southwest power link and reconnects back to it at Imperial Valley. The remainder of the path to Arizona is still a single line. Currently, there's still no other interconnections at the 500,000 volt level between San Diego Gas and Electric and other adjacent utilities such as Southern California Edison. Rather, the only other major path for electricity to the San Diego region is Path 44, a, a set of 230,000 volt power lines which are all interconnected with Southern California Edison through the switchyard of the now former San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. Imperial Valley has a 92 kilovolt sub transmission system connected between Southern California Edison's Palo Verde Deaver's 500,000 volt transmission line to the north and San Diego Gas and Electric's Southwest Power Link to the south. Now in 2001, there was a proposal by San Diego Gas and Electric to construct another 5,000 kilovolt interconnection called the Rainbow Power Link to Southern California Edison in Valley Substation in Romoland, just west of Hemet. This line would have connected to a new substation in the North San Diego County community of Rainbow, just south of Temecula, where it would then transfer power to an existing 230,000 volt line running down the Interstate 15 corridor into Escondido. The project, however, was met with opposition from residents of the areas that the 500 kV line would have been routed through. Due to the opposition, this project was abandoned in 2003. Now, the events leading up to the 2011 Southwest blackout originated in Arizona where a mistake by a technician switching out a capacitor bank during maintenance at the North Gila substation in Yuma, Arizona resulted in the shutdown of an incoming transmission line originating from the Haciampa substation adjacent to the Palo Verde nuclear generating station. Now this line also supplies the Southwest Power Link. Although Arizona Public Service did expect a quick restoration, the shutdown had in fact resulted in a large phase shift and the line could not be immediately reconnected. With this line shut down, the Southwest Power Link went from San Diego into Yuma, Arizona, but wasn't being supplied from anything else. Most of the power that was going to the San Diego region through the Southwest Power Link was then rerouted through Southern California Edison system and through San Onofre Switchyard. At this time, the San Diego region was consuming more power than what could be 
imported through San Onofre Switchyard, and this is going to get progressively worse throughout the event. Imperial Irrigation District's 92 kilovolt tra subtransmission system also ended up transferring some of the power between Edison's system to the north in San Diego Gas and Electric's Southwest Power Link. In less than a minute, two transformers at Cochilla Valley substation overloaded and disconnected, and this caused severe low voltages throughout Imperial Irrigation District's area. A few minutes later, another substation, Ramon, overloaded and tripped. This disconnected the majority of Imperial Valley from Southern California Edison. The remaining draw through Imperial Valley from San Diego and Yuma, Arizona overloaded Imperial Valley system and caused generating stations in the region to shut down. Similar overloading of sub-transmission lines interconnecting Yuma, Arizona with the rest of Imperial Valley to disconnect. The only source of power supplying Yuma, Arizona is now a backfeed through the remnant of the Southwest Power Link. Another transmission line tripped off, which disconnected the rest of San Diego Gas and Electric, Imperial Valley, and Yuma, Arizona. The last interconnection to Imperial Valley was a transmission line called the S-Line that supplied Imperial Valley from the Im Imperial Valley substation. And that line overloaded as well. However, instead of just tripping that line, the protection scheme initially commanded two generators at La Rosarita near Mexicali to go offline. This was to solve a problem that didn't exist and actually made this issue worse. Then the line did trip off and now Imperial Valley lost power. All of the power to the San Diego region and Yuma, Arizona and Baja, California, which is interconnected to the U.S. by a pair of lines, one running to the McGill substation in San Diego to Tijuana and another from the Imperial Valley to Mexicali, is now being drawn through San Onofre Switchyard and through Path 44. Now this draw was very high almost a 170% overload, and a safety system called the Song's Separation Scheme activated and disconnected the transmission lines going into San Diego. San Diego, Baja, California, and Yuma, Arizona are now completely separated from the rest of the Western Interconnection Grid. This island had insufficient generation and rapidly shut down. And a dull load shedding operated throughout the region. Still some generating capacity was lost. In a few seconds, San Diego, Baja California, and Yuma, Arizona broke up into three smaller islands, which all then rapidly collapsed. The resulting outage left nearly 7 million people without power, including 1.4 million customers of San Diego Gas and Electric and 1.1 million in Tijuana in Mexico. The most affected region was the San Diego region where streets was essentially bought to a standstill due to the loss of traffic signal and the San Diego trolley system shut down as there was no power to operate the trains. Residents in inland areas and Tijuana and Cochilla stayed outside late into the evening to escape the heat. Also, highways throughout the area experienced extreme congestion, especially on the Interstate 5 and Interstate 15 corridors linking San Diego with the greater Los Angeles area. The outage caused significant 
losses to stores and restaurants, which was forced to discard large quantities of perishable food, which would spoil from the lack of refrigeration. The outage also affected water treatment plants and sewer treatment plants, resulting in potentially unsafe water supplies and raw sewage contaminating some beaches. As a result, residents were advised to boil water afterward. A few hours, about 11 hours after the outage occurred, power was resto- slowly restored to 694,000 customers, and by 4.30 a.m. the next day, power was restored to all 1.4 million customers of San Diego Gas and Electric, However, the system was still being described as fragile. As a precaution, citizens were initially advised to conserve power and public schools and college, community colleges throughout the region were closed that day.